Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting video. We've got some new tools to show you here and these tools have been made by another YouTuber which is Neil Reiteter aka The Wax Whisperer. If you don't know who he is or you've not watched any of his videos uh, I will link his channel down in the description box below. But what Neil's done is over the past couple of months he's been releasing little teaser videos of him using these tools and now they're finally available so of course I had to have them and try them out. This is the easy ear that we're dealing with at the moment and the patient's other ear is the difficult one, absolutely jam-packed with wax. So we're going to use all three tools to try and clear it. So what has Neil done? He's made the Rye Curette, which has been inspired by a Jobson horn, I would assume, which is what you can see there. He's made a Rye Hook, which is inspired by St. Bart's, the best set St. Bart's Hook or Wax Hook. And then he's made the Rye Pick, which I think is probably his version of a Rosen inserter. This is the difficult ear here. Again, the outer layer is hard as nails, but thankfully the inner layers are a bit more acquiescent to scooping and hooking, that kind of thing. So why has Neil done this? I think, and this is just opinion and interpretation, but I think he's taken these tools and tried to put his own spin on it and improve them because to be quite frank, the existing designs suck big time. Now, I've got absolutely no beef with anyone who, who likes the tools, but I personally don't use them. So if I need a manual tool, most of the time I'll reach for a Cawthorn hook. And if you go back on my channel, you'll see that I think there's maybe only one video of me using a St. Bart's hook and maybe two or three using a Jobson. But personally, I find them you know, overly large for most ears. I find them, you know, unwieldy and just clumsy. And, you know, I find them, they're difficult to use elegantly uh, for, 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 you know, the delicate structure that is the ear canal. So that's why I prefer a Cawthorn or suction. So a redesign like this is long overdue, long overdue. So what do I think? Um, let's deal with the hook to start with. So my impression is that Neil has essentially tried to thin the design down and, and kind of sculpt it in such a way that A, it comes to a point, but it's not sharp, and B, it looks to be a little bit more slim or, or beveled in such a way that, just like here, you can see you can actually shove it in between the canal wall and the wax, which just opens up a lot more options. So I should probably do a comparison here. So I'll show you side by side. So right here, so that's the rye hook, and this is, you know, a typical St. Bart's. They, they pretty much all look like that. But as you can see, the St. Bart's hook looks like a foot, basically. It looks like a chunk of Lego, something that you might hang shelves with. It, and I think that is the original video that I used it in, but that's about it. And you know, because it's, 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 it's kind of got that bracket formation, it's very difficult to, you know, push it into, you know, gaps and, and angles to try and then turn it and, and hook the wax out. You know, you have to have a relatively large gap already created to stick the hook in. So it's just not practical. This is the, the uh, pick. Now, the pick is interesting. So when I opened up the packet, and had a look at these tools. I thought, okay, yeah, the curette, I can see what Neil's trying to do here. The hook, fair enough, looks like a decent attempt at an upgrade. I looked at the pick and I thought, okay, Neil's run out of ideas here. This is, there's no way that this can be feasibly useful. And yet it is extremely useful. So I think he's, he's kind of modeled it after a Rosen inserter. And Rosen inserters, I don't actually mind. They're my sort of least hated out of the three. But, and they're good for getting out cotton wool and hearing aid domes, things like that. But rosed inserters, and it may not come across in, in videos, but they are extremely bendy. So a, a rosed inserter looks like a little kind of, you know, point or, or sickle, and they're ultra flexible. So it doesn't matter if it's made out of, you know, plastic or carbon fiber or whatever, the slightest little bit of pressure and it will bend. And the remedy to that, you might think, is, oh, just use a metal one. 
and I have metal Rosen inserters, but they are needle sharp and for the most part just way too dangerous to use. So, but, but the pick is actually rigid, you know, it, it's actually, it, it does not bend that much. And um, that's good because if you've got a situation where you can't use the curette or you can't use the hook, it's actually just nice to, it is basically a curved spike, but it's not, it's not sharp. It's just nice to be able to actually just kind of pick away or uh, add the wax and just kind of create an opportunity to then go back in with the hook or the curette. And you'll see me use the pick a lot later on. So the pick I like, you know, the pick is, is not a replacement for a Rosen inserter, but it's just different and I will definitely keep it around. The hook, will, I, will it replace a Cawthorn? Probably not. Uh, you know, in my opinion, um, if you're if you're skilled enough with an endoscope, then a Cawthorn is brilliant. And uh, this will probably not replace it. But if you are a wax remover and you don't want to use a Cawthorn, but you shy away from hooks because the original design is crummy, basically, then this is a fantastic upgrade. You know, I, I would seriously try this, the, the rye hook, over a traditional St. Bart's. The curette. The curette is very interesting. Um, it, you may not be able to see it on the video, but it has a num. Here's the pick again. The uh, we'll create a little just a gap in the wax here, and we will be able to create a gap through to the eardrum. So this is a very very good example of how useful the pick can be. If you know the deeper you get in the canal, the sort of sketchier it becomes to use a hook. Um, but again, because the pick is, is you know basically a spike, it, you know you can wield it quite carefully and do very very fine movements with it. So. You know, I don't necessarily mind going quite deep with it. Um, yeah, you might not be able to see on camera very well, but it is bowed slightly. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of smooth and sculpted in such a way that makes it very ergonomic and, and kind of safe to brush up against the canal walls. But that kind of bowed feature is very, very nice because it allows you, again, to skim round the canal walls. Whereas normal jobs and horns, again, as you can see, I've got kind of an axe to grind with, with certain manufacturers that make these tools, but a lot of manufacturers just, you look at the design of the thing and you think how, th there's clearly been no thought put into this because they just, you know, look useless. Let me give you another comparison. So this is the Rye Curette, and this is a typical uh, design of a Jobson. So I'll bring up here. Okay, so, you know, it's a metal Jobson horn. You can get them made out of metal or carbon fibre or plastic or whatever, but they typically, they don't all look like that, but that is a typical example. As you can see, it's just, it's just rubbish. You know, they, it's, it's blocky, it's not even smoothed out nicely. And a lot of manufacturers just go, right, stick it in a mould, mass produce it. So I, I can see what Neil has tried to do here in that he's actually taken a traditional Jobson horn and actually thought about it. So it's nice and, nice and smoothed out and ergonomic, but the bowed feature is actually really nice because as you can see here, I'm able to actually wield the curette and kind of skim round and actually just, you know, bundle the wax into one package that, and then I can take it out. So, you know, it's a lot more ergonomic um, than a regular, you know, basically circle with a hole punched in the middle, which is how a lot of people make, the, make jobs and horns these days. Um, the other thing that you can't see on camera is that, you know, these three tools actually have different versions. So, uh, again, in this video, what I've been doing is there's a version where which you have a curette on one end and the rye hook on the other. It's just a, such a simple thing, but no manufacturer actually makes a hook and a curette in this, within the same tool. So uh, throughout the video, I've kind of been just switching around. It's very, very quick, very, very easy and efficient. If you're using if you want to use a manual tool without any suction or water, you can very quickly flick between the, the curette and the hook. So it's, it's, it's quite nice. Um, the other thing is with the curette, it's, there's a version where you have a curette at both ends, but the actual ends are kind of angled a bit like a Zollner probe. And what that means is that you don't have to hold the tool with your hand in this kind of weird contorted angle if you're trying to get into the canal which can sometimes be difficult with an endoscope. It just means that you can rest your hand comfortably on the patient's face and just curette away. So it's very, very comfortable 
Um, weird to get used to, but um, you know, nonetheless, it's 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 a very good attempt at making the tool just more usable. And I think that's that's probably a massive problem with you know people doing wax removal, whether you're an audiologist or a nurse or a GP or whatever. There seems to be this kind of, and I'm guilty of it as well, a kind of an over-reliance on suction. So lovely looking eardrum there. There is some fungal growth, which is that white fairy stuff, but it's not, not necessarily a problem. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, we, I think we all lean on suction a little bit too much. I know I do. Hence why I've kind of de-skilled a little bit with these, um, with these manual tools. You know, just some raggedy dead skin at the roof of the canal. Patient is obviously hearing much, much better and more comfortable, but he does not like me kind of scraping away this dead skin. So uh, we'll be able to get some of it with uh, a fine end, but uh, not all of it. W well, I don't know whether this fungal growth is, is necessarily much of a problem. I don't know whether it's pathogenic fungal growth, but um, we will send this patient away for some caniston drops and that, uh, that will get rid of the remaining muck. So yeah, I think we, here's the fine end. I think we all rely on suction just a little bit too much and, and actually having you know, a skilled approach with manual tools is actually extremely, extremely important, particularly when you come across a foreign body or fungal growth, but not like this, where the, you know, where the, where the ear is just full of fungal growth and mycelium and stuff like that. Weird cases, you know, you might not use the manual tools that much, but when you come across a weird case or a really difficult case, that's when manual tools are so, so important. So I'm gonna make an effort to, to use them more. So we're just tidying up the uh, roof of the canal here. But again, patient is not liking this. He's been through a lot, realistically. So we'll, we'll let him off. But there we go. Um, given that, that this was the first time that I had my hands on the tools, I think I did rather well. I don't know, what do you think? Let me know how you think the procedure went and let me know what you think of these Neil Rieteter tools. I've got uh, more videos coming up where I'm gonna use them and uh, I will give you not just my first impression, but a thorough review later on down the line. But let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.